Hey guys, today I'm going to be taking a look at a independent distro called Rosa, R-O-S-A. Rosa is a Russian company developing a variety of Linux-based solutions. Its flagship product is the Rosa Desktop, which is what I'm going to be reviewing today, their desktop edition, which features a highly customized KDE desktop. So the KDE desktop is kind of their flagship desktop edition. They do also offer a GNOME, LXQT and Mate. Rosa also has a enterprise server edition which is based on Red Hat. It makes sense for them to base on Red Hat because although I said Rosa was an independent distro it was originally forked from Mandriva which is uh, derived from Mandray which is derived from Red Hat so it has that Red Hat lineage. The Rosa website, at least the uh, English site here uh, it's a professional looking website but I will say it has what looks to be like a lot of stock photos on it it looks almost like you bought a template you know a professional looking template but uh, a bit of a strange website I also briefly looked up uh, for documentation you know on their wiki and you know support stuff uh, most of what's out there is in Russian also their wiki uh, was broken for me like I couldn't do a search on their wiki so you know for you guys that don't speak Russian you know support may be a little lacking on Rosa I will tell you that a lot of uh, Linux distributions will tell you one of the things they really lack is uh, volunteers to do documentation and translation so you guys that speak both Russian and English for example you know if you want to contribute to a project such as Rosa or any Linux distro that needs such work done you know there's always room for for that kind of work alright on their downloads page I'm going to do download the Rosa disk desktop fresh this R9 is the last release they released they released R10 just a couple of days ago so I'm going to review their desktop fresh R10 their KDE edition I'm going to install it inside VirtualBox Alright, so I downloaded the ISO. I've got it loaded up in VirtualBox here. Alright, we have the option of boot from local drive, start Rosa Desktop Fresh R10, install Rosa Desktop Fresh R10, install Rosa Desktop Fresh R10 in basic graphics mode. So I'm assuming the first install Rosa is a text mode installer, and of course the second one is in graphics mode. I'm going to choose the graphics mode. And we wait for it to load up here. And still waiting for the graphical installer to load up. All right, we've finally gotten to it. All right, it is correctly chosen English US for my language. And I click next. We have a license agreement. This is something you don't see too often in Linux. I really hate to see licensing agreements in Linux. Uh, really, a Linux distro should just put out their distribution under the GPL and call it good. There's no reason to have all these extra curricular licenses. Um, but basically, let me just briefly scan it. By installing, duplicating, or using any of the software products in any manner you explicitly accept and fully agree to conform to the terms and conditions, yada, yada, yada. Um, if you use this software in a manner that, that does not comply, yada, yada, yada. Limited warranty. Um, basically, you know, this distribution causes you or anyone else harm, you know, they're not responsible, that sort of thing. It does mention the GPL. The programs within Rosa are governed by the GPL version 2 license. Intellectual property rights. All the rights of the components belong to their respective authors. And then some governing laws for, you know, wherever you happen to reside. Do you accept this license for purposes of this video? I will accept the license and move on. U.S. keyboard, that's correct. Time zone, it is chosen in Chicago. I am in the central time zone in the U.S., so that is correct. Date, clock, and time zone settings is showing me what it thinks the current time is here, which is the correct time, so I'm just going to click next. All right. Now, partitioning our drives. Here is the content of your disk. I created a 15 gig disk in this virtual machine. I'm going to let Rosa have all 15 gigs of that space, so I'm just going to leave it as use free space. If I needed to do some custom partitioning, 
I could select custom disk partitioning right here. And this may take a second. I'm going to pause the video. And it looks like it's going ahead and installing some stuff. We still haven't created our uh, user account. We haven't uh, created a, an administrator password or any of that stuff. So I'm assuming all that will take place after this install runs. All right, now it's got some bootloader information. We need to install a bootloader. So it's going to install it on slash dev slash SDA. That's fine. Uh, delay before booting default image, five seconds is set. That's fine. I'm going to just choose next. And it is installing the Grub2 bootloader. All right, and now we finally come to where we set our administrator password. You always need an administrator password for your Linux system to install and remove software to make any kind of changes on your system. You have to be root. And then we need to create our user. I'm going to call this user Rosa, just to keep it simple. And then we need to create a password for that user. We click Next. Specify host name. It's already chosen Rosa-Virtualbox, which is fine. That's probably what I would have went with anyway had I created it. All right, and then specify which services should run at startup. The cups, uh, print services, that's fine. Samba sharing folders and print printers. I really don't need Samba running on this virtual machine, so I'm going to take that off. Uh, SSH, uh, you know, occasionally I do use SSH, SSH in these virtual machines. I'm going to take that one on. Then I'm going to click next please halt your computer remove the live system restart your computer so the installation is done I just need to re reboot the machine and now we are in our newly installed Rosa desktop fresh R10 let's see how long boot up time takes again this is the KDE desktop edition of Rosa okay we got to a login manager pretty fast Let me give it a password and the virtual box guest edition so it's like they're gonna work out of the box so I don't have to do any kind of finagling to try to get them to work that's really nice because here lately I've been on a bad run getting a virtual box guest editions running in some of these distros I've been reviewing some of them have been a nightmare to get those guest editions to work alright and this is their customized KDE desktop a uh, really interesting looking panel at the bottom. The first thing I notice is this uh, panel here, their KDE panel at the bottom, almost looks like it's a dock because it's got some oversized icons on it, sitting on it, you know, making it almost look like a dock rather than a, a proper panel. Alright, well I'm going to do my typical review. I'm going to go through the KDE menu here and see what programs are installed by default on Rosa. Being a Russian distribution, you know, uh, it might have some some inter interesting choices of software that you know you don't see on a lot of the uh, you know uh, American distros that I often review, uh, and some of the you know Western European distros I review. So, all right, so it looks like we're gonna have this uh, plasma launcher here. Let's see if I can get to a different menu system. I'm sure I could, uh, you know add different uh, menu launchers here in KDE. KDE usually in their widgets has a, a million uh, different um, menu selections. I'm just going to go with the default one though. I really don't like doing these full screen uh, GNOME shell slash Unity kind of launchers here. This plasma launcher, very similar. Because it's full screen and my head is going to get in the way of some of these. So I'm going to have to move myself around here a little bit. So Let's see if we can break this down by categories. It has recent applications here, even though we've never launched anything. This is the first time we've run it. If I go to this Applications tab at the bottom center, okay, it should list every, everything installed on the system. We have this little Office group. If I click it, yeah, we have the LibreOffice suite installed. We have Calc, Impress, Draw, Math. We have Ocular. Uh, I didn't see Writer in here though. So that is oh there's Writer. I'm sorry. That's my fault. 
That's why I was drinking coffee earlier in the video. I'm just waking up here. Tools. We have our Dolphin File Manager, the standard KDE File Manager. Dolphin is. I've mentioned this several times in my videos. I think Dolphin is probably the best file manager available on Linux. It's really one of the big highlights of the KDE desktop environment. We have KNet Attach, KPPP, some uh, services configurations, uh, print settings. We have Pulse Audio, KSysGuard, USB format for you know formatting USB thumb drives, uh, ARC, which is the, our archiving tool for zip, unzip, K snapshot, Rosa freeze. Now I don't know what that is because it's a Rosa specific program. Let's see what Rosa freeze is. So I mentioned that the Rosa website uh, was lacking in a lot of ways. I mentioned the wiki was not working for me again. I did a quick search on their wiki for Rosa freeze, see what that program was all about nothing comes up it just is throwing up errors so their websites having problems but Rosa freeze looks like it's your standard uh, like rollback kind of program where we freeze the system now so whatever we do in this session when we re reboot the machine we go back to to how it was before we started this session that's pretty cool that they installed that also under tools we have file light we have KRDC which is a remote desktop client we have KRFB, which is a remote uh, file sharing client. So a lot of remote desktop stuff on here. Again, uh, Rosa also does a lot of uh, enterprise stuff. They offer a desktop enterprise edition too, uh, based on Red Hat. So it makes sense to have some of this uh, enterprise-like software on the system. KDE's Partition Manager is also here. All right, under Games. We have K Patients, K Minds. We have the Steam installer, so it's not installed, but one click and it will begin to install Steam on the system. And then Color Lines. So we have three of the uh, you know little KDE games that often come on KDE installs, and then the Steam installer. All right, we have Audacity, which is a audio editing program, really nice for editing audio files. Uh, we have the Chromium web browser. Our default browser is Chromium on this system. Clementine is a fantastic music player. You're starting to see Clementine as the default music player on a lot of systems these days, uh, particularly in KDE uh, because it is a Qt program. It uses the Qt toolkit, so it works very well in KDE. Although KDE's uh, default audio player is called Amarok, and that's part of the KDE suite of uh, software but a lot of distros are replacing Amarok with Clementine these days. Easy Tag, Firefox, GIMP is installed by default. GIMP is kind of like an alternative to say Adobe Photoshop. You know, it's for editing uh, graphics. WinView is our image viewer. We have Hardware Probe, Install and Remove Software. Let me click on that. And it looks like your standard graphical software management program and we wait for it to tell me how many updates are available okay actually it didn't tell me there were any updates available uh, I don't think it was actually running an update I think it just took that long for the program itself to load so you know some of these graphical software management tools sometimes take a long time to load because they're pulling down a lot of data you know they're pulling down a, a database a very large database from the web usually but you know you have your standard you know categories here of you know we could break this down say I wanted to install games I go to the games category and then it has some subcategories I could choose adventure and then it lists you know some adventure games here I could tick on and then install so pretty neat we have K3B which is KDE's disk burning utility the best disk burning utility utility available for Linux uh, I install K3B on every machine, uh, whether I'm running KDE or not. K3B goes on every machine that I install. Camoso, that is our webcam app. We have KCalc, which is KDE's calculator. Kden Live, which is a video editor, a really, really nice video editor for you guys that are into that sort of thing. If you, you guys that are making YouTube videos, check out Kden Live. KFind, which is our uh, file search. 
Color Paint, our paint program. Console is KDE's terminal. Really nice terminal program. I know a lot of you guys don't like to live in the terminal. You know, you hate the command line. But for those of you that do, console is a really nice terminal. KTorrent is our BitTorrent client. KRide is another text editing program. Let me move my head out of the way. Rosa Image Writer. Now, let me click on this. I'm assuming this is going to be for writing uh, disk images. And it is. So, good for, you know, making backups of your system. Rosa Media Player. So, they're doing their own media player. That's interesting. Let me see. Rosa Media Player is free software. And that's the only thing that it tells me here in the About section. All right. Moving on. We have Skype, the installer, Viber, the installer, and then Xsane, which is our scanning utility. So we have a tab down here called Time Frame. If I click that, it's really just showing one document, the welcome.pdf. We haven't even launched that, but I guess that's our welcome document for running Rosa the first time. And uh, then we have a timeline here. I guess this is an easy way to check, you know, when you viewed documents in the past, on what dates. I guess it's kind of like a content visualization tool. You know, you can monitor your activity, you know, at a specific date, and you can, you know, return to that particular document with a click here. Kind of cool. One thing I will mention under the Applications tab. Uh, now you did have some groupings of stuff here, but for the most part, this was not a really bloated KDE install. You know, not a ton of software installed by default for, you know, a KDE install. You know, you still have, you know, your full office suite, you know, you had some uh, multimedia stuff, you had an audio editor, a video editor, you know, you had the Skype installer, the Steam installer, you know, you had some stuff, but, you know, it, it wasn't loaded down with a whole lot of extra cruft that you don't need, so I like that. Now, let me check out what kind of wallpapers are installed by default on here. Usually, when you click right-click on the KDE desktop, there is a way to change the background. I'm not seeing that in the list, at least on their version of KDE here. Where that is normally sitting is at the bottom of this menu. Instead, we have folder settings. I believe folder settings also does get us to where we need to go. It does. So they only have three wallpapers by default. So the standard one we're using now, which is called the Rosa background. And then we have a couple of the standard KDE ones, such as this one. Close the program. And then we have this one here called Stripes, which is a dark blue. Yeah, that's pretty nice if we're going to use like a light silver colored kind of theme. And I'm just going to go with that. Alright, in the dockish like panel at the bottom we have an icon here for configuring our desktop. So this gets us to, you know, your little control center here in KDE. Where you have your usual suspects, account details, application appearance, uh, application system notifications, file associations, locale, shortcuts and gestures. Uh, workspace appearance, we have desktop effects. So. This is where you can add a little bling to your desktop. You know, you can add, uh, you know, your looking glass, magnifier, do different effects like blurring and fading in and out, magic lamp. Uh, I'm sure you can probably do your wobbly windows, all that kind of stuff. Under works, a workspace appearance. Now here is where we could, you know, change our window decoration themes, our cursor theme, the desktop theme, and the splash screen, which is what uh, appears before you get to your login manager when you're booting up. So that's pretty cool. And we have accessibility options, uh, default applications, desktop search, window behavior, and workspace behavior. We have some network stuff, hardware settings such as our uh, printer, video card, digital camera, display and monitor, input devices, removable devices. And then some sysadmin stuff, authentication, authentications, backups, configuring and authentication for Rosa tools, font management, install, remove software, which is, we've already looked at that particular program, the login screen, software media manager, startup and shutdown, this is your auto start programs, update your system, 
let me launch this because we really haven't seen a proper uh, system updater load yet. I need to contact the mirror to get the latest update packages. Please check that your network is currently running. Is it okay to continue? Yeah, I'm going to tick that to never ask me that question again. Obviously, if you're launching a system updater, you want it to go out there and connect to the mirrors and start pulling stuff down. And it comes up with a list of programs that could be updated. It looks like it needs to update. Chromium, Flash, some KDE libraries. Uh, you know, not too big of an update, but I'm not going to bother doing it on this video. So, what are my initial first impressions of Rosa? Well, the install gets an A. No problem with the install. Very straightforward install. Easy. Anybody can do it. Anybody that's ever installed anything like Ubuntu or Mint or Elementary or any of those user-friendly distros would have no problem getting Rosa up and running on their system. So the install definitely gets an A. Uh, most of the time when I review KDE desktops, they always get an A too because I've been very impressed with some of the recent releases of KDE. Never been a KDE user, but you know, that's changing. I might live in KDE soon because I really like the Plasma desktop. Their version of the Plasma desktop I'm not thrilled about. It has this almost cartoonish look with this panel. They're trying to make it look more like a dock. I will say these oversized icons and everything it's almost like it's designed specifically for like new Linux users. It's almost like it's trying to mimic, you know, that Windows kind of world in, in, in a lot of ways. So uh, I'm, not, I'm not digging that, but that's just my personal opinion. I think a lot of new Linux users would love Rosa, to be honest. So I'll give the, the desktop an A, too. Uh, the one thing that I did not like, and I mentioned it a couple times on the video, uh, you know, any Linux user needs support. You know, you're going to run into problems no matter what distro you run. You are going to have questions. You are going to have, you know, breakages occasionally. You, you run Linux long enough, you're going to need support. And when I go to their website, and, you know, I don't mind a lot of it being in Russian, you use Google Translate. And again, you guys that, you know, want to support projects like Rosa you know that have some translation capabilities you speak Russian and English you know maybe start translating some English pages for these guys like I understand that but when your wiki doesn't work when I do a search and error messages come back you know when your site is completely down that's a problem so I kinda give Rosa's website you know a, kind of a fail you know they need to work on that but, you know, the actual install and review of the desktop, I give that an A. Peace, guys.